You ready? Mm-hmm. Welcome to Political Thursdays. It's CJ and my main man Moin here. And today, man, we have just been we've been getting it in all day, just researching and finding out more and more information. And of course, President Trump is again making headlines. Uh, but this time, he's talking a little bit more about small businesses and how. Uh, Some of his new regulations will affect the small businesses in in a variety of ways, uh, ranging from regulations Mm to uh, actually being able to start your small business, um, simplifying some of the taxes, and what I found extremely important um, and intriguing, might I add, was the health care. So, bro, before we dive into too much, I just want to know what's going on in the health industry. Is it hurting right now? I mean, very, 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 very interesting question. So we all know that um, they're trying to repeal and replace and make it improve Obamacare. Obamacare, right. Now, there are a lot of issues that exist inside Obamacare that uh, because of a lot of regulations on insurance companies, right. it's, it's, it's a big mess. It's yeah. a big mess, but it definitely has some good qualities inside that mm-hmm. that is definitely usable and understandable and we need to learn from that. But let's forget all of that and let's just focus on what is happening right now. Yeah. So they're trying to find out a better solution for our healthcare system. Right. That's what they're talking about right now. But before we go into all of those stuff, what let's just focus on what happened yesterday. So we have four bills that are in prospects to hit the Senate floor mm-hmm. uh, or the House floor, the Congress, for them to review. And uh, one of those are, as you said, like I wrote it down because this is, this is a very complicated stuff. I, I yeah. just cannot. I, I this is not my job to Trapping memorize. Inside it. your little mind. Huh? Yeah, it's. It, remember, really. remember when we were trying to read and understand the bill, yeah. oh my so gosh. that we can ex, we can have this communication. It's way too complicated. It is. So, President reformed healthcare. So last night, uh, we have uh, McCarthy. Yeah, the, Kevin McCarthy. Kevin McCarthy. Yes, they introduced four pieces of legislation. That will. Take burdens away from small businesses because of regulations, lower costs, and increase access to healthcare. This was the three primary focus that they had for these four legislations. Yeah. And so the first legislation was uh, Compatible Health Insurance Reform Act, Competitive Health Insurance Reform Act, which is HR 372, which eliminates antitrust protections for insurance providers, so Americans are not left with just one choice of insurance provider in, inside their state. I'm watching it and saying it so that I'm not giving away just random information. Random information. This is like, this is exactly what it was written in the bill. And what this means mm-hmm. is, I think you understand this a little bit better. Would you wanna? Well, I mean, just from what I gathered from it with the competitive uh, health insurance uh, reform. Reform Act, yes. Uh, this is the first legislation, by the way. We have three more. Yes. Yeah, so the antitrust, basically, what the antitrust kind of puts in place is that it states that an insurance company can't hold a particular area hostage. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So when we were talking a little bit earlier, I started to understand this a little bit more because I could be from Oklahoma mm-hmm. or Texas, for that matter, and um, I drive up to, let's say, Wyoming. Mm. Well, now I have to be insured in Wyoming, but Wyoming charges outrageous prices. Mm -hmm. So why can't I choose to stay with my health insurance or my health coverage that's back in Texas or Oklahoma? Why can't I choose to stay there? Mm -hmm. Well, this act kind of repeals, doesn't, not kind of, but it repeals it so that there is more competition in the marketplace. Like this act proposes that one should be able to keep his coverage from that area mm-hmm. or decide which way is better for them, which is, which fits their financial needs better. Yes. Also, now, because of some, certain regulations, insurance companies cannot have, provide their services in certain areas, in certain 
demographics. Yeah. But when they take this out, they will probably be able to compete with um, insurance companies in areas where they have those insurance companies have more dominance. Uh, so okay. then it lowers the price down and they have more competition. Yeah, lowering their price, supply and demand, man. It, it always comes back to supply and demand. At least it seems that way. Um, one thing that really stood out for me was the small business, um, mm -hmm. the Small Business Health Fairness Act. Yes, um, HR eleven o one. That's the name of the bill. Well, that's that's huge to me because yes, and from the little that I understood about it, because I noticed that it stated that. It's, Insurance companies could band together to uh, get a lower, I'm sorry, small businesses could band together to get a lower insurance cost. But I don't fully comprehend how that will really happen. Can you shed some light on that? Yeah. Okay. So let's get insurance out of the way. This is, let's focus on small business because we're going, we, it's so complicated about when it comes to insurance and there's so much regulations. That if if I explain it and relate health insurance with this, mm -hmm. it's not going to make any sense because health insurance definitely is not small business. Right now, what they're saying is that they're going to level the playing field for small businesses to compete against larger businesses that are already established, which right. is really hard. Yeah. Now they were going to let small businesses band together so that they have much more de a bigger defense system against big companies trying to buy them out mm. or trying to f lower costs because big companies can afford to lower costs for like six months because they have more equity behind them. Right. And then if there's driving down the cost or the price of the product for six months, a small business is going to survive with that kind of right. price right. on the market. Right. They would drive itself. It, it would drive itself out mm -hmm. to stop this from happening. Small business are let they can get together. And then they can they can have legal boundaries of how they can have a bigger say on price regulations. Ah, okay, okay. That's that's, that's what it is. That's, that's what it that's is. That's a huge thing because once the small businesses can you know put their two cents in about what the prices should be for insurance and things like that, mm -hmm. it really does give them the opportunity to say, okay, well we want to we want to be a part of this insurance policy or be partnered or band together as a yes. union, a mm -hmm. small union, if you will, to get a lower price. So I guess that kind of opens the door for people like me and you who are going to start a business or are in the business world now, and we actually get a chance to decide how much money we'll spend on health insurance, especially when it comes to our employees. Yes. So, One more thing that I want to touch bases on is that this Small Business Health, uh, health Fairness Act, which is H.R. 1101, is as a legislation that will build on a bill that I've already uh, brought up here so that I can refer to you guys is that yeah. this this bill uh, is already in place for a long time it's section 202 it says Congress finds that a vibrant and growing small business sector is critical to create jobs in a dynamic economy yeah. that's what they're saying now there's a lot more to this, like fundamental changes that are needed in the regulatory and enforcement culture of federal agencies to make agencies more responsive. There's a lot of stuff that really small businesses really don't need. Now let me say the purpose of this bill. Let me refer to the purpose of this bill. The purpose of this title is to implement certain recommendations of the 1995 White House Conference on Small Business regarding the development and enforcement of federal regulations. To provide for judicial review of Chapter 6 of Title 5 United States Code to encourage the effective participation of small businesses in the Federal Regul Regulatory Board. To simplify the language of Federal Regulatory Effective Small Businesses. To develop more accessible resource of information on regulatory and reporting requirements of small businesses so that they can compete with big businesses. And this is a lot of work. A lot of paperwork. For small businesses, a business that's just, just started cannot do this kind of stuff. This is this is like ridiculous. Time out. Did y'all understand what I don't even that's way too much. Who can understand that? That's the problem. This is the problem with our our, our world right Way now. too much. Can't nobody can understand all that stuff you read, oh man. You'll be sitting there reading this bill for three hours. My it's not, it, not even I didn't even look at the bill. It's I didn't even I didn't even finish like I didn't even read half one fourth. This was not even one fourth, a couple of sentences. That's part of the problem, man. This is this is the issue. 
And so we come here to try and shed some light on what's going on in the world today or some of the legislative um, languages that yeah, are Yeah, that's used. going out, but it's really hard because who can understand that stuff? And, and But we have to start getting involved. We have to start getting involved and educating ourselves on some of this because it is important for us to vote. If we voted to say, you can literally, this can happen. Yes. You can literally pro tell your local officials that you want a bill to be processed to make the language in these bills more simple. Yes, simplified. So that you can actually read them and learn about them. You can do that. Isn't that I mean, isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. But we don't use that kind of stuff. I've never done that myself. I'm telling I'm like telling you what you should do. I've never done that myself. But it's stupid. Who can read that? That's, I mean, that's too much. That's too much and uh I think I think we're getting better because now we are sharing this with you guys and mm -hmm. this is why we have to read it. Yes. We have to understand this is a lot of this is a lot. This is a lot of stuff. But there might be a reason. We who knows? I don't know. There might be a reason because when it comes to bills and stuff like that, people can share a different kind of perspective of what is not written there. Yes. And then and then just drag you into a different direction that you don't want to get dragged into. That's why they are like completely strict on what language they use. And that's, it's important that you said that because there is another part of the healthcare that really gets to me, uh, which was the uh, Protecting Access Care Act, which is supposed to limit frivolous lawsuits, which drives up healthcare costs, right? And so basically what it's saying is that you are going to have health insurance in place that will stop preventative health care in the aspect of, or preventative medicines. And if you do decide to file a lawsuit, that you'll be compensated in a maximum of three years. Maximum three years, unless they can prove fraud or that your injury uh, happened at a time when you had a foreign body in your system. That could include weed, substances like weed or alcohol and things of that nature, which bothers me. And that's part of the language that I don't understand. I need you to be specific because that bothers me because what you're saying is, in my mind, how I interpreted that, that in the event that I get injured because someone is giving me a bad medicine, just because I had a drink the other day or because I smoked weed three weeks ago or four weeks ago or however you decide to smoke, if that is the case, then you won't be compensated for your loss and it had nothing to do with your injury. I have a problem with that. That can backfire. That can be dangerous. Very, very, very dangerous. But in the same token, I can definitely understand, and this was something that you brought up earlier, that it does cause the immune system to be weakened. Okay, so there is another perspective that we can share on the same rebuttal. This is exactly what happens in Congress. Now, a lot of people exploit this kind of uh, benefits. Yeah. And what they were specifically saying, what were they saying about... Uh, the preventative disease or preventative medicine. Preventative medicine. It, preventative medicine basically is... Uh, antibiotics. Antibiotics. What happens is that sometimes, a lot of times this happens, is that doctors, some doctors are really ir irresponsible, not all of them. Some doctors might be very, very, very irresponsible and then they are bought by the big pharmaceutical companies and then they, the first thing that they do is they recommend antibiotics. What is antibiotics? The name tells you it, it, it creates antibodies that defends you from viruses, illnesses. Now, understand that this is not, na your body is supposed to naturally build this kind of stuff. Your body is supposed yeah. to be immunely stronger. So when you start using this kind of antibiotics, it drags down your immune system. Now you're more vulnerable, now you're dependent on these drugs for the rest of your life. Yeah. This looks like a glitch because now you're dependent on this medicine and you're buying this medicine and who's making money? Pharmaceutical companies. companies. This can, this, this can, that, that might be another reason why, and, and another thing, human beings are supposed to have, go through, you know, it's just, it's just human nature. We get pain and then pray, pain strengthens you. So when you're young, you're supposed to go through an immune system buildup naturally. But I think, you know, the problem is I think we've gotten so weak as a society 
that anytime we start to feel a little pain you or a little change, then we say, we want a quick fix. We need something to fix yes. you right now. Yes. When your body needs that pain or your mind needs that pain or you need that pain in order to progress, you don't see true growth unless you start to feel a little bit uncomfortable. And that's why I have to say, I although I do find that just baffling, yeah. that you could put something in place to where if I did something three weeks ago and got injured today and it has nothing to do with it, that I wouldn't be compensated. But in the same token, I can definitely understand where you're coming from because once you start to use these antibiotics, mm. then your body, these, these bugs get stronger over yeah. time. And then you get in a situation where you create a super bug and there's no antibiotic for that. No. And, and it's dangerous because your body is supposed to grow this. Our body is designed to grow this antibodies naturally. Yeah. When we're destroying this, this, this can be a huge problem. This is why you see a lot of people who are older than 65, people who are the senior citizens of the United States. Yeah. They have so many health issues yeah. it's because of this. You can see it whenever you go outside. Anyway, so this is what we have to say for this week. You know, we're going to bring you a lot of information. There's a lot going on. Uh, I hope that you guys have understood a little bit because I didn't surely understand the whole thing. Mind blown. Mind blown. But listen, here in the near future, I want you to keep a close eye on healthcare. Keep a close eye on uh, small businesses and the regulations that are being put in place. We will continue to educate ourselves and in turn seek to educate you as well. But we want to learn more. If you know more information, you can share more information. Please comment below. We'd love to hear your thoughts on our show today. Uh, signing out, this is CJ and my main man, Moin. Till next time. Peace. Let's drink it out.